Who doesn't love a nice cozy blanket to cuddle up in? I'm Jan Howe from YouMakeItSimple.com. In today's DIY tutorial, I'm going to show you a little twist on the self-binding blanket using different combinations of flannel, fleece, plush, minky, and other fabrics that I'll go over. They make the coziest blankets ever and the best baby gifts. Let's get started. In a previous tutorial, I showed you how to make the self-binding blankets using just flannel fabric. And that's a great thing to watch if you haven't already. Make sure you watch the video all the way through because I'm going to show you a lot of tips and things you'll want to know when you're sewing with plush fabrics that will make things a lot easier, will save you a lot of time and help you avoid some mistakes that you might make. To make your blanket, you'll of course need fabric and we're going to go over those details in just a minute. You'll also need a pair of fabric scissors, a rotary cutter if you have one, a rotary ruler, mat, some straight pins. I really love these floral tip flower head pins, especially when I'm working with baby items. That way I'm sure not to accidentally leave the smaller head pins in a baby blanket or whatever you're making. So these pins come in real handy and you'll obviously need a sewing machine. You'll also need some kind of marking device. I really like these heat erasable pens. I also recommend using a ball tip sewing machine needle in your sewing machine. If you have questions about a sewing, your sewing machine needles, I have a tutorial for that. Make sure you check that out. So you're using the correct needle for the fabric you're using. I like to use a 90-14 size. And if you want to add a cute little tag to your blanket, have that handy. And I have a tutorial on how to make your own fabric tags. And I'll put the link in the description below. So let's talk fabric. The plushy fabrics, I'm really falling in love with this plushy fabrics, the, the minky and the different plush fabrics. They're cozy and you can find them pretty easily at any fabric store in a different array of colors, solids, and prints. And you can also use fleece fabric, which is really common and easily to find. And I'm gonna show you three different methods and which will show you different types of fabrics. You can make both sides of the blanket with a plush fabric, or you can mix it up and use a flannel piece. And you can also use the double layer gauze fabric, which is really cozy. On this particular blanket, I'm going to use a flannel piece and a piece of fleece. Same with this blanket. Now, just a tip about buying the plush fabric. It can tend to run a little bit more expensive than your regular fabric. So what I have found that if you, if you can find, this is a, a really pretty rose color plush throw that I found at the store. I haven't washed it yet. You'll want to pre-wash your material, especially the flannel because the flannel is going to shrink. These synthetic fabrics are not going to shrink. So you can buy the plush fabric by the yard. And this is what I have done with these two pieces. And I bought them when they were on sale. Otherwise they're kind of pricey. But this particular blanket is 90 by 66. And that's a lot of fabric. As you can see, that is a lot of fabric. And I can probably make two or three blankets out of this and maybe some cuddly things. This piece at the store was a yard and a half and it was, it was $10 and this was $10, but it has almost like three yards of fabric on it. So keep your eye out for if you're making blankets for already made blankets that you can cut up and make into baby blankets. Of course you can make these blankets any size you want, but for this particular tutorial, I'm going to make a miniature blanket just so you can see it easier on a smaller scale. This blanket's only going to be 18 by 18 inches. So how these blankets work is you have the inner piece and then you have the outer piece that we're going to be folding over, mitering the corners, 
and so it's a self-binding blanket. You can use flannel, you can use two pieces of plush fabric, or you can use fleece and interchange them as you want. So you'll cut the top piece and then you're going to add three inches on each side, so a total of six inches bigger than the top piece. So I've just cut this 18 inches and six inches bigger is 24 inches. Whatever fabric you do decide to use, you want to make sure that you're lining up the, the grain of the fabric on one piece with the grain of the fabric of the other. And how you can decide which is the grain and which is the stretch of the fabric is to just simply take the edge and pull it. This is the salvage edge, so it does not stretch. This does not stretch. This cut edge, it stretches quite a bit. And even a woven fabric is going to have a little bit of a stretch to it. Can you see that? So stretch to stretch, non-stretch to non-stretch. Really important because as you wash them and as you sew them, they're going to stay evenly distributed and not get all funky when you wash it. The next thing that we'll do is fold the sides in half and mark the halfway points with a pin. So just right on the fold, insert the pin, and we'll do that with each side, both the front piece and the back piece. Decide which side of the plush fabric you want to be the right side and place that facing up. Take the top piece, and place it right side facing down, and we're going to line up those halfway points. You want to be make, sure, make sure that you are lining up the stretch with the stretch and the selvage edge with the selvage edge. And then we're going to take a marking pen and mark the corners. I really like these erasable marking pens that erase with heat. So a half inch from each corner, marking those little notches, and that's the marking places that we'll use to sew to. Grab your straight pins and we're going to be just pinning these in place. Make sure that you're not stretching the plush fabric when you are lining up the fabric. So one thing I want to mention about this plush fabric and this minky fabric, to be quite honest, it can be pretty tricky to work with. And if you're not measuring these corners correctly, it's really easy to get off and you're going to have uneven borders. And it's so frustrating to sew your blanket all out and sew your sides and flip it over and your borders are not even. So I just want to save you some frustration and if you'll follow this step, it will help that immensely. So I've pinned my, we've pinned our halfway points. We've left that three inch border. Make sure that that is where you where you're at and that's just a little bit off so I'm going to move that down just a little bit and make sure that that's at three inches and we want to make sure that this end is going to be three inches as well so what I like to do is measure three inches and put a pin so that there's no guesswork here it's going to be exact the point that this, so we've marked our halfway point, so this stuff has a lot of play to it, a lot of stretch, and it's really easy to get off. Even just a half inch or will just throw off your border. So the edge of this fabric is going to line up with that pin. And then we'll pin it in place. so that when you're lining this up, 
that is going to be at the correct place and then our mitered corners are going to be exact and not off. I can't stress how important that step right there is in making these plushy minky fabrics come out correctly. So obviously if you had a bigger blanket, this would take a bit longer. So once you have it all pinned in place, we're going to take it to the sewing machine. But we're not going to sew all down the, the side in one sweep. We're gonna sew from the center down and just sew to those half inch marks that you've made with your pin. So the reason we do that, if we were to sew that whole side, it just doesn't sew evenly. So this is a really nice trick to get that sewing correctly. You're going to leave in one of the sides a four inch opening so that we can turn it inside out. So on that last, I usually just leave the last side that I'm sewing open, that four inches open so I can turn it. I have threaded my machine with the corresponding color and the bobbin thread. And I'm just going to be using a straight stitch, back stitching at the beginning and the end of the seam. And I'm using a half inch seam allowance. I'm only going to sew up to that marking point. And I'll flip it around. just to see where that, because I'm on the other side, I'm going to put a pin right in where that half inch point is. And to keep it even, I'm just going to go directly to the other side. So on this last section, I'm not going to sew it completely shut. I'm going to leave a four inch gap somewhere in that section. This is what the corners look like. So I've sewn it together and I have these weird little ear things on the corners. This is where we're going to make the mitered corner. Bring the fabric edges together. Make sure that that is coming to an even point. Folded edge away from you. Ruler edge along the fold. Edge of the ruler at the point of the last stitch and trace that line. Pin it in place.
and then we'll take it to the sewing machine. So I'm going to backstitch at the edge, sew to the point and backstitch. Don't cut it off quite yet. So before we cut anything, make sure that you've sewn the corners correctly just going to find my opening here and flip one of those corners open and that is correct see how that's a mitered corner if you've sewn it not the right way it won't look like this and so if you've done that and it doesn't look right just unpick the corners I think a lot of people have, have done this it's an easy thing to do to not get that angle right but if it looks like this you're good so flip it back out and we're just going to cut it and leave a half inch seam allowance cut off those little points get them all this is the fun part just turn it inside out Poke it out, poke out the corners with your fingers. And lie it flat. And look how cool these mitered corners are. So if you have a big blanket, you'll want to lay this out on a big table or the floor. And we're just going to take a bunch of pins and pin it in place to close that opening up and to add a tag if you want this is a good place to add the tag just going to fold the seam allowance which was a half inch under and you may have to ease in the fabric this fleece this plush fabric can get kind of stretchy. I personally just like to use a zigzag stitch, especially on this plush, plush fabric because you won't see the stitches. It will be hidden in the, in the fibers of the fabric. If you're making a blanket with the flannel for the binding, it's a good idea to, after you turn it inside out, is to press the edges. Make sure the seam allowance is pressed towards the outside. If you are using minky or a synthetic inner fabric, you don't want to iron too hot of an iron onto it or it might melt. So just get that cotton flannel pressed. Now you can use a decorative stitch around the edge or I'm just going to use a straight stitch. I have a lot of people inquiring about the tags that I add to my projects. I have a tutorial showing you how easy it is to make your own labels. Make sure you check that out. It really does add a lot of character and charm to the finished products. So there's just a few tips and things that I want to go over when you're using two pieces of plush fabric for your blanket. On this blanket, I'm using a Sherpa type plush fabric, which is really stretchy on one side and has less stretch on the other. So when you're cutting this out, 
You want to make sure that you're not pulling it and stretching it when you cut. Make sure you're getting just a square cut. Another thing to note is that it will be really linty. There's going to be a lot of fluff blowing around. Don't worry about that. Just clean it up when you're finished. I may, I may even have some in my hair right now. <laughs> so this blanket is going to be a bigger blanket. The finished size is going to be 42 by 36 inches. I'm making the border a little bit bigger than the other blankets that I've shown. So instead of leaving six inches additional on that back piece, I'm making the back piece 10 inches bigger. Just as with the other fabrics, you're going to want to make sure that you're lining up the stretch with the stretch and the non-stretch, the grain with the grain. I wanted to go over the corners really clearly on this plush fabric. If you don't get these corners measured exactly, it's going to be all wampus and you're going to have uneven borders. So I have marked my halfway points and I've gone around and pinned most of this blanket, but I want to, I'm saving this corner here to show you this last corner. This blanket I have left five inches instead of three inches like I have on the other blankets. This is gonna have a little bit of a bigger border. So I'm going to make sure that this end is kind of leaving five inches. And same here. I'm going to measure the five inches and just mark that with a pin. And that's where my fabric should end. That's where this corner should end up. So I'll bring that end to that point and just pin it in place. And you can see how the Sherpa is curling. Just make sure that you're getting the ends lined up, the edges lined up. And I, if you just pin, start pinning here, and if you just start sewing here, by the end of the seam you're going to have most likely a gap like that so you're just going to ease it in so you can kind of see how I'm just going to find that center point here and pin it in place and then I'll pin it again just somewhere between there and then pin it again. We're using a lot of pins on this project, especially with the plush fabric. That's just going to help keep your sewing even and the fabric from stretching and staying in place. So let's finish this corner here. I've already pinned this in place and that should be five inches. And so when we line that up, look at that perfect corner that we have. So I'll just lie that on flat and pin in the middle. This is a lot different than working with woven fabrics. There's a lot of play with the fabric. So you want to make sure that you're pinning it in place. Now I'm ready to sew around the edges. Remember I'm going to just sew on one side then go to the side directly across and then the other two sides leaving an opening so that I can turn it. If you have a walking foot on your machine it's very helpful. If not just make sure that the two fabrics are feeding through evenly. So on the Sherpa fabric, I'm using a wide zigzag and you're not even going, you don't even see the stitch. Just make sure you're sewing right on the edge there. Oh my gosh, this is the coziest thing ever. So here is the plush with the plush, the Sherpa on the outside, and it is way cozy. So there you have the three different options using plush fabric. Plush on the binding, flannel on the inside, flannel for the binding, fleece for the front, and plush with plush. Make them any size you want for your babies, your toddlers, your teenagers, 
and even us adults like a nice cozy blanket. Be sure to save your scrap pieces of plush fabric. I have some fun little projects coming up that you won't want to miss and you'll be able to use these scrap pieces of fabric. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you click on the subscribe button and click on the bell so you can be notified when I put something new up. We'll see you next time.